it's time for your mix of movers and shakers, of doers and makers. It's time for Funko Fun Chat. Today's guest, he's the voice director for Pokemon and voices Charmander and Psyduck. It's Michael Hagney. Well, I'm Michael Hegney. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, proudly. I was the original voice of Charmander and Psyduck and Cubone and a lot of other pop heads for the original series of the, te- the American version of the Pokemon television series. And I was the voice director and I also adapted the scripts for the first about 200 episodes and the first three uh, movies too. I got my start as a CBS page in 1977. I think that's the only job interview I've ever had is for the page job and that was the most important one because that got me into the television business and then I worked uh, with the father of a guy who was a fellow page who did uh, a lot of game shows like Password and $25,000 Pyramid. I worked with him on live events like the Thanksgiving Day Parade and the New Year's Eve uh, uh, shows and so I got to meet a lot of you know kooky celebrities and be on a lot of exciting shows. From there I went to an ad agency where I did movie packages and promos for tons of movies and worked with a lot of great voiceover people. From there did a, a syndicated show with Kelly Ripa. It was a, sh- a show called Music Scoop. Welcome back to Music Scoop. Uh, We did a a competition show. It was like American Gladiators, but on skates when inline skating was really big. It was called uh, Blade Warriors. And then for three years, I also uh, wrote and produced a show with my uh, partner, Mark Juris, a series of two-hour specials called the Horror Hall of Fame. It's the Horror Hall of Fame. And the host was... uh, Robert England, who was Freddy Krueger, and we had, I was a horror fan as a kid. This is the one night of the year when we get to salute the biggest monsters in Hollywood. We had tons of great horror people, Tony Perkins and Janet Lee and Jason, and the co-host was the Crypt Keeper. So menacing, so frightening. So we had, it was really a fun, fun show to do. From there, I started adapting mostly Japanese animation. And then a friend of mine that I worked on, uh, worked with shows previously, said, hey, we have this new show and it's called Pokemon. And this was, I guess, in about, uh, I don't know, 98 or so. So uh, that's, how I start, that's how I started on, on Pokemon. And I, I was hired to adapt the scripts and to direct the voice actors. And then eventually, when we would have a little bit of time at the end of our sessions, I thought, oh, well, uh, you know, I can do Charmander. I'll do it. Char, Char, Char! A Charmander! But I didn't know the Charmander was going to be in you know, 40 episodes. I think I did about 40 of Pokemon altogether in those, those first, you know, classic seasons. And that's all I have to say. I'll leave now. <laughs> the, the, adapting the scripts was hard because you had to fit those flaps and try to put jokes in and everything. Those were 3 o'clock in the morning nights. The Japanese, it's a different sensibility. As you know, it, it, they do the, the, the dialogue after. It, sometimes it matches and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, in the American way to do it would be we record all the voices first, then animate to those voices. In here, I tried to match because we felt it was a value. The, the most difficult part of it was that puns, because there would be plays on words for Japanese words, but they had no meaning in English. I I tried to do that to match the flaps, to always convey the story, but also funny it up a little bit, you know, like add some gags in there. And some people really liked that and some people really hated that. I think over the years it's changed because now that I finally do get, oh my gosh, the classic ones are the best, I love the, the funny jokes, and like, well, yeah. Well, the best, you know, I, I now, you know, I have a podcast called Original Poke Man, which is about the making of the series. And so I get, you know, emails from people, people even at the conventions too, that come up and say, you know, I'm, I want to do a voice, I want to, you know, be a voice actor. Uh, do you have any advice? And I said, well, not really, because I cast myself. So get a, produce a show and then cast yourself. That's my, that's my best advice <laughs> to voice actors. Other than that, I don't know. Uh, my other advice is to be lucky, like I was. Yeah, I think, you know, it's kind of an old joke, but they say, you know, there are three reasons why Pokemon 
is the huge success that it, it was and still is. And nobody knows what any of them are. Pokemon just captured people's imagination. We're hitting a time when the people who were, you know, 8 and 10 and 12 when the show came out and when the games first premiered and the cards and it was just everywhere. It's just a, a huge thing in people's lives. The games, you know, with Pokemon Go especially and this show is still going. I think because now you're having the double generations and now those people who are 30, 31, 32, they want to take their kids but I think also they want to have that reliving of that time. You, when they were kids it was a little bit simpler and they knew all, everything about every Pokemon and those emotional connections are so strong at that age. I think that's part of it. I've been, I've mostly been expanding my waistline for the past few years. I'm an old geezer now, so uh, this has been great for me, signing of autographs and going to conventions, so that's kind of what I do now. I'm just the guy who goes, dar, 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 and say, aye, aye. <laughs> I, I can't believe that I was in TV. I, as a kid I dreamed to be in it and I just, as I said, I just lucked into it. And now to have these kind of things where there's little figures of characters that I did and people come up and want me to sign them and, and you know all the all the the Funko Pops that I've been signing it's just people just oh this is my childhood it's, it's just great I, I really couldn't ask for anything more the thing I'm looking forward most to is there's a slice of pizza on Suprema pizza on I think it's 33rd and 8th it's fantastic it really is good I had a long career I was in it gosh a, a long time is it 40 years maybe? That's enough. Now, who wants me? I mean, there's so many young people with hair and everything and vitality. And uh, if Netflix or Amazon Prime wants to do a, a, an old school Charmander, uh, Charmander meets Psyduck, throw Godzilla in there, I'm there. Yeah, I'll do whatever they want. Now that's a fun chat, but there's more. Check out these other interviews and more fun stuff on Funko Fun TV.